BYU, Southern Illinois. Now it's time to play the game. The talking's over for BYU. Mitch Harper, Matt Biamonte inside Lavelle Edwards Stadium. The paint is being applied to the field. Uh, not the blue yet. It's just white. But we're seeing game day uh, get ready for BYU 2024 season. Matt, no quarterback announcement again from Aaron Roderick. He did say when asked, does he want a clear-cut starter going into the SMU game, he then answered, we have a clear-cut starter. Do you buy that? I buy that they know who's going to take the first snaps, but I ultimately think, based off my own observation from, from what we saw that the media was allowed, Mitch, sure. I don't feel like there was much separation. Maybe there was enough to feel confident to say, you're getting the first crack, but I still believe at the end of the day, whoever it's going to be, they got to produce. Like if they do 14-0 and let's say whoever started game one throws two picks and the offense struggles, you think he's just going to be given the job against SMU? I don't think so. And I don't think it should be that way. Like neither of these guys have won enough, historically speaking, to have a long runway. And, and that's not to say short leash or anything, Mitch, but look, A-Rod has been clear. They got to do it right behind us on game days that goes for the quarterback that goes for the run game all those questions you guys have at home it's got to be done here on Saturday before it's we can say that's the guy so there's a long way to go just because whoever takes the first snap by no means does that mean he's going to start the whole season I asked Roderick if he factored in the eligibility piece into this quarterback decision and he said no, because they have to win now. I thought that was a pretty candid response because there is a sense of urgency around this BYU football program. You can debate whether or not Kalani Sataki is on the hot seat or not because I think Kalani is a great fit for the job. But still, no one wants to go through another losing season, Matt. And Saturday is, the, is a tone setter because we have seen BYU in the past play these FCS teams or last year Sam Houston and – it's an underwhelming performance, and it carries over throughout the entire year. This offense, this defense, too, which cannot be understated, they got to come out strong on Saturday against a solid, but team that BYU should beat in the Southern Illinois Saluki. And it was nice to hear that from players today. Uh, we caught up with Keanu Hill. These interviews you'll hear on our early pregame coverage, 12 to 3 Cougar Sports Saturday, getting you ready for the game. I caught up with Falaro Potty. He referenced how offensively, he feels like they're going to get back to what they were a couple years ago, explosive chunk plays. We just didn't see a lot of those. If that comes to pass, that's music to our ears, right? And for Keanu to say, yes, like we need to, we need to, we got to get out to a fast start. We got to put more points up. That's a good sign. He even referenced like after last year's win against Sam Houston, it wasn't a great locker room. And so the team understands that they got to get off to a good start. We just got to see it. BYU, there's a lot of questions, too, I think, about the defense. Uh, you know, second year under Jay Hill. I do believe, though, Matt, that this group is going to be better. I've said in the past that they could be on the high end, top four in the Big 12. I like the personnel. Some questions in the interior. John Nelson, Blake Mangelson, they're going to be solid, but I, think I have some questions about the depth. Secondary, I think it's a good group, but still not proven on a week-to-week -week basis. It just feels like they've made a lot of leaps. There's a better personnel, but uh, – we got to believe it when we see it. Yeah, especially when it comes to sacks. I know that's not the end-all, be-all, but look, Tyler Batty said he's want double-digit sacks. The coordinator, Jay Hill, is referenced. We need more sacks. They need more sacks. There's no, there's no other way to put it. But the other part that is going to be really fascinating to watch this year, Mitch, is there's so much focus on the sacks because the numbers were so low and their rank was so bad. they got to have more turnovers, too. Yeah. Like, sacks, sacks are nice. Turnovers are nicer. I want to see more interceptions, more fumble recoveries. they got to give the offense more opportunities. And I think if they can do that, then they will be a top-four defense. BYU is an interesting team this year. And, and I think that fans, they don't have this unrealistic expectations, this notion that BYU fans have these lofty expectations. No, I don't buy it. I, I mean, really, I think BYU fans are feeling like, should we be worried about Southern <laughs> Illinois? I don't think you should, but I think that Your they did. simulation <laughs> had me worried last night on EA College football. The key, though, on Saturday is that BYU just gives a proof to this fan base, hey, you know what, they've turned a corner. It, it, because I think Southern Illinois is good enough to where you feel like if you do win by 30, you win by 28 or 21, whatever it is, and you have a good offense that's got a good pace, they're not making these costly mistakes, false starts, administrative penalties, explosive plays, you can say, okay, 
this is game one. This was a nice start. That's what you got to see from this team because last year how they started was underwhelming. They got to get off to a strong start. I think they can, and it's just a matter of now seeing it. I like the messaging, though, from coaches and players that we have got to go prove it because in years past, BYU has had some hype, and they don't live up to it. There has been no hype with this team. They just got to go prove it on the field. Yeah, and I think that is what is sort of fun about this year is in a perfect situation, you're running back a bunch of guys you know, and there's high expectations, and you want to achieve that. What's going to be fun this year is – Who's going to emerge? Uh, is it a quarterback? Is there a running back? Is there a new tight end that, that makes plays? There's a lot of unknowns, and that's scary in some respects, Mitch, but it's also going to be fun to see which players emerge, who becomes a household name. And, and for me, I really want to see that pass game take another level, which quarterback can get the playmakers the ball, whether it's Chase, Darius, Cody. I want to see this pass game flourish again, and, you know, we're a few days away from seeing if that can happen. And the ground attack, too, has been a big focus for Aaron Roderick. L.J. Martin, Kalani said he's good to go, cleared to go. So we shall see what workload L.J. gets. 6 o'clock kick, BYU, Southern Illinois. Again, listen to us on Saturday on KSL News Radio, beginning at noon. Also on Thursday night, we'll be at JCW's in Harriman talking BYU football and the college football season at large. It's here, Matt. The, the anticipation, we wait for this. We talk every Saturday, breaking down all the minutia, all the little tidbits about this football program. It's finally time to play some games. I can't wait. Cannot wait. It's going to be a blast. Uh, definitely keep your, your radio tuned in. We'll get you ready for this uh, season opener in 2024. So for Mitch Harper, I'm Matt Bayamatsu. We'll have you covered all week on KSLSports.com.